Hello everyone, today we are going to be Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about probability and let's first just talk about the idea behind probability. Okay, in previous sections you've talked about uh, probability experiments like rolling die or drawing cards or shooting free throws and you've talked about sample spaces, right? Every possible outcome. Well, the idea in probability is that we assign a numeric value to outcomes in a sample space. And what we're trying to do is sort of quantify likelihood. So that numeric value gives us an idea it gives us an idea of how likely that outcome is. So one example of probability that we see all the time is uh, weather prediction, right? There's an 80% chance of rain today, or there's a 30% chance of rain today. They're talking about probabilities as percentages. We are going to talk about them as decimals. Okay, so let's talk a little more technically about a probability assignment. All right, so every event in a sample space... is assigned a number between 0 and 1. So we're going to be dealing with 0, 1, and fractions or decimals in between. So 0 means that there is no chance of it happening. 1 means it definitely will happen, or there's a 100% chance of it happening. So it definitely will happen. Okay, so that's one rule, is that the value has got to be 0, 1, or in between. Uh, another rule is that the sum of the probabilities of all outcomes in the sample space is 1. So if we look at, uh, say, let's say we're rolling a die, right? Then the sample space that we could get is 1 through 6. And if we look at, let's call that sample space S, if we look at the probability of S, it must be 1, right? These are all the possibilities, so the likelihood that we get one of those possibilities, well, it's definitely going to happen. So probability of the sample space is 1. All right, let's work with an example. Okay, we roll two honest dice and the observation that we're looking at is the sum of the two numbers that come up. And we want to describe the sample space. So here we're thinking about typical six-sided die, and we want to think about what numbers could we get, right? Like if you're playing Monopoly, how many spaces could you go when you roll those two die? And the lowest that we could get is two, right, if we got a one and a one. And the highest that we could get is 12. So those are the possible outcomes, but we could get these a lot of different ways, okay? Because, right, so there's only one way to get a 2, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this parentheses notation. This is the first die. This is the second die. And think about them as being two different colors, right? A blue dye and a red dye. So that tells us that, 
we're gonna have a lot of different options here. So that's the only way we can get a two. What about ways that we could get a three? Well, our blue die could be one and our red die could be two. Or the other way around, the blue die could be two and the red die could be one. And so we're gonna have to make sure that we take into account order for every single one of these. And I'm gonna stop doing the different colors because that would take forever, but that's the only way to get three. So let's think about how we get four. Well, we could have the blue die be two and the red die be two, or we could have one be one and the other three, or the other way around. And those are the only ways to get four. Now how we could get five, well, we could get one and four, or in the other order, four and one. We could get two and three, or in the opposite order, three and two. And that's it. Six, we could have three and three. We could get two and four, four and two. And why don't you, if you want a little exercise, pause the video and go ahead and see if you can't work out the rest of these on your own and then check with what I come up with. Let's continue with six. So three and three, two and four, four and two. We could also get one and five in either order. And that's gonna be it for that. We could get seven. So let's see, we could get one and six in either order two and five in either order, three and four in either order. And that's all of the options for seven, eight. Well, we could get four and four. Uh, if we roll a one, we definitely can't get an eight, but we can get it with two and six. And six and two, we could get it with three and five five and three, and that's going to be it for eight. Nine, we could get uh, three and six, six and three, four and five, five and four, and that's going to be it for nine. Ten, well, we could get two fives. And then the way that I'm thinking about this is I'm sort of thinking about, okay, what's the lowest die I can get and still get 10. So for instance, with nine, the lowest die I can have and still reach nine is three, right? And then three and six in either order. And from there, we bump that three up to four in either order. And if we try to bump it up, well, five, we've already got that and we've already got six. Okay, so with 10, we could get two fives. Uh, we could get, if we bump that five up to a six, it's gotta go with four in either order and we can't go up any higher. With 11, the lowest die we could get and still have 11 is five. It's gotta go with six, six and five in either order. We can't do any better than that. And with 12, we can get six and six and that's the only way to do it. Okay, so if we count these up, we see there's four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and then 23, 26, 29, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So we have 36 outcomes, which I verified by counting, but we could also use uh, the multiplication rule. So we have two die, six options for the first one, one through six, six options for the second one, turns out to be 36. All right, so we didn't just describe the sample space, we just wrote out the whole thing, which is maybe more than we had to do, but it's gonna be really clear, right? It's a lot clearer that way. Okay, now we wanna find the probability of the event, the sum of the dice is nine. So let's write out that event E1. And we've already actually figured out the possible outcomes here. Remember the sum of the dice is nine, was these four up here. So three, six, 
six three four five five four. Okay, so in that event, we don't necessarily care about exactly what all of those outcomes are. We care about how many there are. So there's four outcomes in E1 out of a possible total, the total possible in the sample space is 36 outcomes. So the way that we get the probability of E1 is the number of outcomes in E1 over the number of outcomes in the whole sample space. So we've got all of that information here. Well, there's four outcomes in E1 out of a total 36. So we can reduce that and we get one over nine. So the probability of E1 is one ninth, right? Getting a nine should likely happen one ninth of the time. So we've taken this rolling dice and we're sort of quantifying it and giving us an idea of likelihood. So it's a little bit likely, but it's not extremely likely, right? If we got something like eight out of nine, right? That means that eight ninths of the time or eight out of every nine times, it's you can expect to get that event, whatever it is. But here we're not very likely. All right. Let's find the probability of this event, E2. The sum of the dice is at least 9. Okay. So here, that's very different. So at least 9 means it could be 9. It could also be 10, 11, or 12. All right. So you have two options. One option is to just list out that event, E2 but we listed them all out above so we can go up and count. So let's just go count in the sample space. We could also just list them here. If we wanted. So what we're looking for is the number of ways to get 9, 10, 11, or 12. All right. So let's go back up to our sample space. So here, we had, these were the possible ways to get nine. Here was where we started with 10. So those are ones we care about. Here we had 10, 11, and 12. All right, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 events there, or 10 outcomes there, excuse me. All right, so we don't need to write out E2, we just need to write out the size of E2. There are 10 outcomes in it. All right, so to get that probability, we do the same thing we did before. So the number that are in E2 over the number that are in the sample space or the total possible, you could also say. So this time, what's changed in this fraction is only the numerator. The total possibilities were there's still only 36 possible outcomes when you roll two dice. And the number of ways you could get at least nine, there were 10 different rolls that fit that. So we've got 10 over 36. And we can go ahead and reduce this, right, if we write it all the way out. 10 we can write as 2 times 5, 36 we can write as 2 times 18, and those 2's are going to cancel, so we end up with 5 over 18 is that probability. And to give you a better idea, you can certainly convert this to a percentage, but we're going to stick just with fractions in this video. All right, let's go ahead and change it up a little bit.
So here we're talking about a family that has three children and we're simplifying things a little bit, some biology, and assuming that the likelihood of having a girl and having a boy are equal, right? So there's a 50-50 chance of having a girl or having a boy. Okay, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at a few different probabilities. So first we wanna find the probability that the oldest child is a girl. Well, let's just go ahead and list out the sample space here. So there are three children, okay? And let's just go ahead, since it's not gonna be too bad, and list out that sample space. Well, if there are three children, they could all be girls. Girl, girl, girl. Uh, one of them could be a boy. So boy, girl, girl. And I'm gonna start it off at the beginning and it could sort of cycle through and be that boy could be the middle child or that boy could be the youngest child. And what I'm assuming here is that, right, here is the first child, here is the second, and here is the third. So the oldest one that we're concerned about in this is the one listed first. All right, so there could be all girls, there could be two girls, there could be only one girl girl, boy, boy, that girl could be in the middle or she could be the youngest. Uh, so three girls, two girls, one girl or no girls. Okay, and if we count, we see that this is eight possible outcomes. All right, so Find the probability that the oldest child is a girl. Well, that's not gonna be too bad. We just need to find the ones where the first child listed is a girl. So that's here, 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 and here. So there's one, two, three, four possibilities where the oldest child is a girl. So the number of possibilities that we care about over the number total, so this is number where oldest is a girl over the total number of possible outcomes. And it's four over eight or one half. So in terms that we've heard before, right, there's a 50-50 chance of the oldest child being a girl. All right. Let's do one more example with this. Okay, find the probability that at least one child is a girl. So there's a couple of different ways to think about this. We could count above in the sample space, but we wanna use this to introduce another concept, which is the complementary event. So in non-technical terms, the complementary event is the exact opposite event. So here, let's call the event E, that there's at least one girl. And let's call the complementary event F. Okay, F is gonna be the complementary event. And what's the opposite of at least one girl? Well, that's some amount of girls in the family. The opposite of that is no girls. Okay. And the main idea with complementary events is that the probabilities of complementary events add to one because we're essentially talking between the two events about all possible things, right? All possible outcomes in the sample space. Here's the outcomes where E happens, and then every other outcome is where E does not happen. So what we've got is that the probability of E plus the probability of F is equal to one. And sometimes it's easier to list out the complementary event than it is to list out the event you want. Okay, so 
listing F here is easier. Because how can you have no girls in a family with three children? Well, there's only one way to do it, all boys. Only one way to have no girls. So that means if we want to compute the probability of F, well there's only one outcome in F, and remember there were eight possible outcomes, right? We listed above all of the ones girl, 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 boy, girl, girl, all of those. So one out of eight is the probability of F. Okay, so this is our complementary event. And we know that those two events have to add to one. So to get the probability of E, so the probability of E, which remember was at least one girl, it's got to be whatever makes things add to one. So just take one and subtract off that one eighth that we have. And if we want to, we can go ahead and get a common denominator, 8 over 8 minus 1 over 8. And remember, they go over the common denominator, and you subtract the top, which gives us 7 over 8. So that's one way to get this uh, by using the, the complementary event. We could have also just gone up to the top and counted. Uh, either way works for you. In larger examples, it's sometimes much, much easier to use the complementary event, but in this one, it's about 50-50. That is it for today.